If you could own only five guns, what would they be? I recently asked myself this question, and the task proved surprisingly difficult, because there are a lot of different guns that I like, and it's not easy making sacrifices. In the end, though, I was able to narrow my selection by first determining the five basic types of guns that I would want to own before choosing the specific models for each of those types. Without further ado, in no particular order, here are my top five picks for the firearms I would choose if I could own only five guns. 22 Rifle Ruger 1022 No gun collection is complete without a 22 of some kind, so I knew immediately that one of my top five guns to own would have to be a 22 semi automatic rifle. A 22 is perfect for small game hunting, pest control, plinking, and for introducing new people to shooting. The ammunition is also so small that I can carry literally hundreds of rounds on my person without really noticing the weight. Perhaps unsurprisingly, my pick for a 22 rifle is the Ruger 1022. The very first gun that I ever owned was a Ruger 1022, so it's a weapon with which I have much experience. I found the 1022 to be a robust, accurate, and dependable weapon. I could easily use it for tactical purposes if needed. Another reason that makes the 1022 my choice for a 22 rifle is how spare parts and accessories are literally everywhere. During a disaster scenario, this would be an advantage where I would have a greater chance of finding spare magazines or other parts in the event that anything broke over other 22 rifles. 9mm Pistol Walther PDP Compact I believe the pistol is the most important firearm you can own, simply because you can conceal it on your person and travel with it. I also believe that if you could own only one pistol, it should be a 9mm, because it's the most abundant and the cheapest to shoot. While some may expect me to say the Glock 19 or 17 is my pick for 9mm pistol, the truth is I would opt for the Walther PDP. The ergonomics on the PDP are incredible, and it melts into my hand seamlessly. The trigger is also a wonder in its own right and is much more light and crisp than any other striker-fired pistol I've used. Reliability, of course, is excellent. The fairly compact size of the PDP means I can easily hide it on my person for concealed carry, while the 15 plus 1 capacity offers plenty of firepower in a self-defensive situation. For these reasons, I find it to be equally as versatile as it is pleasurable to fire. Granted. I am fully aware of the PDP's shortcomings as a survivalist sidearm. Because it has a short track record, spare parts and accessories are not nearly as available as, say, a Glock or a Smith & Wesson M&P. Nonetheless, the PDP is one of my favorite handguns, and one I have found great use and enjoyment at the range. It would be my personal pick for a 9mm pistol, if I could only have one. 12-Gauge Shotgun Mossberg 500 I've heard many arguments supporting the idea that the pump-action 12-gauge is the most critical gun to own. No one can deny that the 12-gauge shotgun is highly versatile. When loaded with buckshot, it's devastating for home defense. With birdshot, you can use it for bird hunting or clay pigeon shooting. And with slugs, you could easily use it for big game hunting. My preferred shotgun is the Mossberg 500. The controls are convenient for me and the fact that this was the only pump shotgun to pass the U.S. military's brutal Mil-Spec 344 3G torture test says a lot about its quality. While you should always keep up with proper cleaning and maintenance on your guns, this isn't one of those shotguns you have to clean in between each use for reliability. I fired over 400 rounds with zero misfires. The Mossberg 500 is also a high-functioning shotgun, with a good balance between adaptability and consistency. It handles smoothly and feeds, fires, and ejects without issues. The 500 has an infinite selection of aftermarket accessories and interchangeable barrels to allow complete customization, and you can switch the barrels easily. All you have to do is unscrew the magazine knob, pull the action down halfway, and twist the barrel to pull it off the receiver. Then, just put the new barrel in, screw the knob back onto the tube, and pump the action. The forend is a nice, tight fit on the action rails, and the serrated wood is easy to grip. 
This is the perfect all-purpose shotgun. You can use it for hunting, clay shooting, and home defense. 45 ACP Pistol Ruger SR1911 If I could own five guns, two of them would need to be handguns, at least for me. I was very close to making my second handgun a 357 Magnum revolver, likely a Ruger GP100, as it would be very versatile in that I could shoot both 357s and 38s through it. Ultimately, though, I decided if anything were to happen to my PDP as my concealed carry gun, I would want another semi-automatic pistol that I could use as an alternative. I also wanted this pistol to be in 45 so that I could have a slightly greater variety of calibers instead of just 9mm. Many people will disagree with my choice here, but I picked the 1911, and specifically the Ruger SR1911, simply because it's one of my favorite guns to shoot. There's no other handgun that balances as well for me as the 1911, and it's the pistol I find myself enjoying the most each time I visit the shooting range. The SR1911 in particular has proven to be very reliable, with only a few malfunctions during the break-in period and none since then. Even though magazine capacity is limited at 8 plus 1 rounds, the trade-off is that the 1911 is slim and easily concealable on my person. Beyond that, the 1911 is endlessly customizable, with no shortage of spare accessories and parts on the market, something that contrasts heavily with the PDP, where aftermarket options are more limited. 308 Semi-Auto Rifle Springfield M1A Finally, I need a centerfire rifle to top off my five favorite guns. It makes perfect sense to use a 308 semi-automatic in this scenario, as I can use it for both big game hunting and tactical training. My choice here would be the Springfield M1A. The M1A first entered U.S. service in the 1950s and continues to be used by some marksmen in the military today. There's good reason why. It is a very well-built, rugged, and accurate rifle that will do everything you ask it to do. I fully understand the M1A is heavy and the 308 ammunition is not as cheap as 5.56 45mm NATO. However, a rifle that fires the 5.56, like the AR-15, is simply not as multi-purpose for me as the 5.56 round is far too light for elk hunting. Ideally, I would own both, but since I only have one gun left to choose in my list of five, I would settle for the M1A or any 308 semi-auto rifle over a rifle that fires a lighter bullet. 